Welcome to Studio Lajo Cree. Larry Krieg here with you again with part two of Hokkaido Railroading, Hokkodate to Sapporo. Today we're going to visit the lower peninsula of Hokkaido. We're going to take a train from Hakodate to Oshamambe Junction, and then a small one-car DMU over the mountains to Sapporo. Then we'll go the regular route along the coast to Sapporo. But we'll start with a look at Hakodate, city of 265,000 people, railroad town, port city, and beautifully preserved streetcar tram system. The blue badges show the streetcars, the yellow star is the railroad station. These were taken in 2008 when I visited with a tour group, Trains Unlimited Tours. Most of the trams date from the mid-20th century. There were a couple of low-floor modern units. And car number 39, this 1910 Bernie-style single truck car. We had a lovely, noisy ride, and I enjoyed it very much. We also noticed that our motorman, driver, really enjoyed his work. Good to see that, isn't it? At the tip of the peninsula is Mount Hakodate, which is a park. You can go up to the top of the mountain on this beautiful ropeway, or what we would call a cable car. The city of Hakodate was opened as an international port in 1854 by a visit from Commodore Matthew Perry of the United States. After the opening of the port, international companies began setting up diplomatic, trade, and church missions, and you can see the historic buildings as you go up in the tram. The JR Hokkaido Rail Station was built in the 1990s. Has some lovely artwork commemorating the visit of Commodore Perry. In a moment, I want to show you some of the train sets running out of Hakodate, but first, I want to explain about the electrification of the lines. The vast majority of lines in Hokkaido are not electrified. There are two sections that are. One is the line running south from Hakodate through the Seikan Tunnel connecting Hokkaido with the main island of Honshu. The other lines are all in the vicinity of Sapporo, the capital. One running north, 85 miles to Asahikawa, the island's second largest city. One running west, 21 miles to the seaside suburb, Otaru. And one running south, 80 miles to the industrial port of Murora. All the main long-distance lines are non-electrified, or only partially, and require diesel train sets. There are several that have been developed specifically for service in Hokkaido. But let's start with the electrics. This is a Series 485-3000, which began service in 1996 and served until 2016. It's an EMU using 20 kilovolt, 50 hertz overhead power, and it is used in limited express service through the Seikan Tunnel. This train set being hustled in Hakodate Yards is a Series 789-1000, began service in 2002 and is still going strong, although in a different part of the island. It's an EMU operating under the island's 20 kilovolt, 50 hertz wires in limited express service. Top speed is 80 miles per hour, and it served until 2016 in the Seikan Tunnel service down to Honshu. They now run from Sapporo south to Muroran and north to Asahikawa in a very conservative, elegant gray paint scheme. This DMU is a series NN183, which began service in 1988 and was withdrawn beginning in 2013. It is a DMU. It does not tilt. 
And here comes what has served for many years as the top of the line, the series 281 Hurico, which means pendulum. It began service in 1994, still proudly serving a DMU with two 355 horsepower motors under each car connected to the wheels by a hydraulic transmission. It has the capability of tilting up to 5 degrees and it is in limited express service with a top speed of 80 miles per hour. This was the first of a series that was designed specifically to address the challenges of railroading in Hokkaido and has met the challenges very well. Let's get aboard a 281 unit and head north out of Hakodate. First time I did this trip in 2008 was in early November. You can see the foliage on the trees. It reminded me a great deal of Michigan and made me wish that we had service this good here too. This is the Pacific Ocean, but I suppose it could just as easily be Lake Michigan. One very distinct difference is this huge stratovolcano. This is called Komagatake, a volcano that had a disastrous eruption in 1640, blew about a third of the top off, like Mount St. Helens. As we go along the coast up towards Oshamambe Junction, you can see that there are quite a few tunnels, lots of curves on this line, which makes it ideal for tilting equipment. Here's Oshamambe Junction. We're going to get off here and we're going to transfer to a single car diesel unit, a Kiha 40. The Kiha 40 DMU was designed in 1977 and as of 2018 there were more than 700 in service all throughout Japan. It is a diesel hydraulic unit with one engine per car. It is the classic face of local and rural rail service everywhere in Japan. This was shot in June, and you can see the engineer driver here. As we go along, there's going to be announcements in both Japanese and English. And I'd like you to take a listen to the gal who does the English announcement. She sounds like she spent a year in the American Midwest learning English. We will soon make a brief stop at Hokkaido is the breadbasket of Japan. Agricultural leaders like Michigan, I suspect they have a lot of unstaffed little stations. Looking out the rear window, you can see the control panel. Here we're entering a station where we're going to meet another service that is coming in the opposite direction. Slightly newer equipment, a Kiha 54. This one going from Otaru to Oshamambe. The service is popular with the older set. Looks like they get a fair amount of snow here. The next stop will be Kongu. Please check your fare on the fare chart. Back in Oshamambe Junction, we're going to hop back on the uh, 281 Huriko train. I want you to take a look at this. First of all, you can see what all those diesel engines under every car provide. is great acceleration. also show us the uh, division point between the coast route and the mountain route.
as we start going around some of the curves, I've put up a bar on the screen so that you can see what level is. It gives you a good idea of how the uh, tilt works. As I mentioned, this is a pendular system rather than a uh, powered system. It works rather like the Talgo colors. And we're going to meet a freight train powered by a DF200 Red Bear 3600 horsepower locomotive. It's a typical freight service, mainly containerized. Let's take a look at the inside. This is the business class. The seats are airline style with electric tilt. Passengers seem to be quite comfortable. We'll take a look in the coach service, go through the vestibule and see what coach class looks like. Very comfortable, two by two. When you walk the train, you should always check out the restroom, right? Not bad. This is the conductor's office. It has a train status indicator a window that opens so that he can look out. Food service is at your seat with Japanese courtesy. As we approach Sapporo, we are going to pass over a, a viaduct, which is just southeast of the Kaminoporo station. In July of 2015, when I stayed for a few days in Sapporo, I took the train down to Kaminoporo station, walked a mile or so to the viaduct, and spent an hour there shooting videos. Train came by ooh, roughly every five to eight minutes while I was there. In the previous video, I showed you a couple of freights going over that. I won't repeat the great service. And I walked back to the Kaminokuro station and hopped aboard this local EMU. And went back up to Sapporo. I didn't shoot video from this train, but here are some shots from one of the diesel units. You can hear the uh, diesel hydraulic system as it accelerates here. And into the busy Sapporo main station, where there's lots of local service, regional service, and island-wide service. The unit that we're looking at here is called a Tilt 261. It is a more recent version than the 281 that we were on, and it is used primarily in service up to the northwest corner of the island. Here's a regional service train. You can tell it's regional service because the blue stripe car is the business class. Here's a look at the city of Sapporo, downtown area, very nicely uh, set up. There's an elevated walkway that goes around the station and allows you access to the downtown business section.
Sapporo has three subway lines. We'll take a look at one of them, the Tozai line. The subway uses a unique guideway with a center rail and rubber tires. You can see on this the guideway with its rail and flat track for the tires to run on. The subway is set up with platform gates and doors that open in coordination with the uh, doors of the train. There's also a very nice location indicator up over each door that shows you where the train is, what your next station is, and what your final destination will be. <laughs> Hokkaido University, which is a large university with a good international reputation, started out in the mid-1800s as an ag school. It reminds me in many ways of Michigan State University. The park-like campus with its beautiful foliage. The university is also known for its good engineering program. One of the Japanese astronauts who spent time up on the International Space Station was a grad of the engineering school at Hokkaido University. And finally, as we take a look through downtown Sapporo, Odori Park is where they have the ice sculpture competition during the famous Sapporo Snow Festival. We're hearing music in the background that I actually recorded there. It is not native to Hokkaido. It is being played by a busker from South America. Thank you for watching Larry Krieg's rail video number 37, Hokkaido Railroading Part 2. Next in this series, we'll look at the northeast and north central parts of Hokkaido. I hope you can join me for Larry Krieg's rail video number 38.